Imagine this. You can live a healthy, vital, energetic life well past the age of 100. How close are we? Well, science is close to giving a second century of life to everyone through everything from radical cutting edge technology to simple changes in how you eat. And Dr. Mehmet Oz, the Oprah Show health expert, is going to be doing a full episode with her on this revolutionary topic tomorrow. But he sat with us right here and is giving us a sneak peek. It's a little known fact that Dr. Mehmet Oz is actually 180 years old, but he is here today to tell us. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Okay, let's get started. Are you saying we're actually looking at the possibility that 99 is the new 50? It is a true, and in fact, what we're really talking about is this whole concept of extreme longevity. Okay, what do we know for sure today that we can do? Well, first of all, we know there's a chemical called sirtuin that tells the body to live longer. So what's the best mechanism? It turns out that if you take rodents and you cut down their caloric intake, it's called calorie restriction, by a third, they'll live a third longer. Imagine that. And humans who are doing calorie restriction, when they're studied, show a, a rejuvenation of their arteries, of their hearts. They actually begin to behave like they're younger than they really are. Okay, talk to us calories then. What does that mean to cut for a human? <laughs> how many calories can you have a day and how many should you cut back? Well, most of us can't cut a third of our calories. That's impossible. But the good news is that you can cut 15% of your calories out and you can still get most of the benefits. So, I did a little experiment with you, Diane. Yes. Right, as beautiful and as suave and youthful as you are, I figured yeah. you're doing something right. So. So I thought you're probably taking in about 2,000 calories a day. So if I cut 15% of that out, and if you look at the table next to you, mm -hmm. this is an example of what calorie restriction would look like for you. So we have... Without that. With, without, yeah, without, mm -hmm. without the soda and the donuts. Uh -huh. And I point that out because if I add the soda and the donuts, that total table is now 2,000 calories. Ah. But just cutting out those two items, which are nutrient empty calorically rich right. will get you to the 1,700 calories. So you've got salmon there, you've got fresh vegetables, you haven't got a potato, but there's no cream on it. There's a dessert, a low-fat dessert. Low-fat yogurt, the frozen mm -hmm. uh, yogurt. By cutting 15% a day down to 1,700 a day, I could... Live, we think, an, an extra 30 years or so. But that same chemical sirtuin mm -hmm. can be turned on with other mechanisms. And one yes. of them is one you, you're gonna to wanna to hear about. A lot of folks know that red wine has been purported to be good for you. Well, right. it turns out that red wine is red because of a chemical in it called resveratrol. And so one of the ways that we think red wines benefit health is by turning on that same anti-aging chemical. Oh, really? But how much? Because we keep hearing the conflicting studies that if you drink Seven, what, more than seven, eight, nine, ten glasses of wine a week, you're at increased risk for some cancers, women especially. Well, for, for women, I would not drink more than a glass of wine or any alcohol a day. Uh, and, and for men, you can get a little bit more than that. Pills of resveratrol make more sense. But again, I want to warn everybody that we don't have a ton of information about this. In humans, we're not going to for another few decades. But taking proactive steps today could give us that extra longevity. Okay, in the near future, big breakthroughs in living longer. So... The big deal for me is to move even beyond things you can do for yourself and talk about what technology can offer to us. I want you to come over. I've got a little secret for you. All right. So on this table, we did a little science experiment. Uh -huh. And we're talking here about tissue regeneration. So imagine that you're a classic car, right? And a part of you breaks. You don't want to discard the car. Right. What you really want to do is, t is fix the broken part. So what does that look like to you? It looks like an ear. It you looks like a styrofoam ear. You, you can ear. hold it. It won't bite okay. you. Does it feel sort of solid? Yeah, very solid. Right. right. So this is actually a mold for a human ear. So if you're a GI injured in war, you had frostbite and lost your nose, we could actually make re-engineer cells. So we take your blood, add it to the mold, and your cells will begin to repopulate this and make you a new ear. That this we can is then, being done now. Being done today. It's actually been implanting for bladders. There's lots of different organs we can begin to replace. But this is the first generation. What I'm about to show you now will really blow your mind. And this is the example. If you hold this, this is a scaffold of an artery made from pig tissue. Right? Now, yeah. if I take that, oh, you can see through, you can use it as a straw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if I take that and I add a little bit of your cells to it, your blood, and then I put it into a pump so it actually is feeling the pressure that an artery would feel, I can make you a new artery. You see a pulse in there? No kidding. And look at this. This is the same technique done with a valve. And if you look from up top here, take a look from up top, yeah. you can see the valve open and close. Oh, yes. So. Take this one generation further. I can now begin to take an, or, a, a, an organ, 
take the cells of the animal out of it, put your cells into it, and I can grow you a heart. It's been done. I can grow you a liver, a pancreas, a spleen, a lung, anything. And this technology for recreating organs for us is going to give us that booster rocket into the second century of life. So if calorie restriction and new insights about how chemicals like resveratrol could turn on systems for anti-aging in your body fail and something breaks, right. you can replace it. Replacement parts when your warranty is getting a little <laughs> old. And how soon realistically before you think a, a pancreas or something complicated like a liver could be ready for replacement single, in your own cells? Single digit years. And that's the big breakthrough. It is increasing so rapidly. When I went down to the Wake Forest Regeneration Lab, which mm -hmm. is where all this material came from, it absolutely blew my mind. And the other person's mind that blew actually is Oprah's. Now. Yeah, that's a pig heart that with all the cells taken out of exactly. it. Exactly. Yes. So you would take that pig heart and inject some of your own cells. Take my blood, take spit your blood. it down, yeah. put the cells into this, baste it in that chamber that we showed in the video, and it will slowly grow your own organ back. That is incredible. <laughs> that is, don't y'all think that's incredible? That is in To see her just absolutely as fascinated as I was means that this stuff really can capture our imagination. And where our imagination goes, our science will follow. What about replacing a brain? I'm not kidding. Could you grow a brain? <laughs> Uh, you know, go with that beautiful new body? <laughs> you could probably grow parts of the brain. So, for example, we could cure Parkinson's or memory mm. loss or spinal columns. But, you know, Diane, you are who you are. And I don't know if you want to have a, a new infrastructure for that. You probably want the software that you've accumulated. All right. Well, you're going to do more with Oprah tomorrow. We've got lots of cool stuff. We're going to do hyperbaric oxygen, uh, infrared sauna baths, lots of cool things about extreme longevity. It is here. It's it here. is now.